Hello, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, everybody's joining, whether it be Wednesday night or Saturday morning or whenever you're joining. 2027, right? Uh, five years from now, you could be listening to this, but well, thanks for joining in. Um, just finished up last week this series, a rather lengthy series, um, Christ in Every Book of the Bible. Uh, looking at the various books of the Bible and how you can see Jesus uh, in each one. Uh, so we're starting a new series tonight. And uh, after some prayer, and I wasn't uh, sure exactly which way to go, but uh, praying and a couple other people prayed for me. Appreciate that. Uh, we're going to be looking, and I don't know how long this is going to be, um, to see where God leads us with it. But we're going to be looking... Uh, the next few weeks at least on some of the teachings that are difficult uh, teachings of Jesus that are difficult to understand um, uh, maybe you might say the hard sayings of Jesus or the, um, uh, the uh, difficult to interpret um, so um, that said tonight we're going to look at I'm calling this one move that mountain we're going to look at uh, and he says it more in, in more than just one gospel, but Mark's gospel, Mark 11, 23. He said, Truly I say to you, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that they say will happen, it will be done for them. So you have to ask yourself, has this ever truly been done? Um, you know, has anybody... And even Jesus, did he uh, ever say, you know, uh, mountain, get out of here and, uh, and you know, have it fly off into the sea? Um, I don't uh, see any there in the Bible or any, anywhere where any prophets or anything like that did that. You know, there's some pretty amazing things that did happen. The, you know, the sun stayed still. Um, you know, Jonah lived in the belly of this fish for three days. Um, obviously people rose from the dead but I don't believe there's ever been a time where someone actually said to a mountain you're in my way get thrown into the sea um, so of course um, preachers and pastors including myself have taught that this is a somewhat metaphorical uh, that Jesus is saying he's using um, a saying or he's using an exaggeration to teach a point and uh, what he's saying is that the mountains represent difficult times, hard situations, uh, harsh conditions, uh, aggressive people, uh, self-doubt, fear, anxiety. Um, sometimes even people will say sickness and, and poverty or whatever that you're dealing with. Um, and with faith, we tell these things to be removed into the sea. Uh, not that we can remove people or situations or problems completely from our lives, right? In fact, you know, sometimes we really shouldn't remove them. Uh, you know, if we just take, you know, difficult situations, if we um, removed them all from our lives, well, we'd probably be living by ourselves up in the mountains because um, just everywhere you go, you can find difficult situations and difficult people. Um, but is by faith we don't let these things um, bring us down or tear us down and, and so we remove the works that they do in our lives through faith and by faith uh, we, we control these mountains having too much influence on our life uh, but faith in Christ can help us overcome these kind of mountains Hello, so I'm back. I don't know if it's because of the weather outside, um, lost internet or what. I don't know what happened there, but I'm back. I don't know. Um, uh, I'm just going to start uh, back where I left. So if you're watching this later on, there is a part one to this. This is part two because we lost internet connection. Um, so um, you might want to listen to the first <laughs> part and then come to this second video. Um, so I believe I was talking about Mount Hermon, and then I'm going to go on. I just finished talking about that. Um, the mountain where many believe was the mountain of transfiguration. It also 
figures prominently into other Jewish writings, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, but it was be, to believe to be the dwelling place of demons. Um, and there's the Mount Beatitudes, when the Sermon on the Mount was preached. Uh, some say he actually preached lower in the valley, and the people sat on the slopes uh, with the lake behind him, and used it as a natural amphitheater. Uh, these mountains uh, are where some great victories took place, for sure. Uh, and they also represent the mountains in the Bible do, um, uh, where the worship of idols uh, and where the uh, uh, evil things, very evil things, took place in, within the worship of these false gods. Um, so uh, you look at Jeremiah 3.23, he says, Our worship of idols on the hills and our religious orgies on the mountains are a delusion. Only in the Lord our God will Israel ever find salvation. Leviticus 6.20 says, I then, God says, I then will destroy your high places and cut down your incense altars and heap your remains on the remains of your idols for my soul shall abhor you, uh, your high places. Um, Josiah and other righteous kings came in and in order to turn the nation back to God, they would go to these high places. They were worship centers of false gods up on mountaintops, hilltops, any high place, cliffs that they could find. And within that, of course, was Baal worship, probably the most common false gods. Um, the, uh, within the Baal worship included child sacrifice. Um, it was uh, uh, temple prostitution. Um, the Asherah poles were um, poles that they would uh, erect and uh, often uh, people would take their clothes off and dance around them. Uh, it's actually perhaps where we get the idea of the stripper pole even today. Uh, so um, this was their way of worshiping their false gods, their idols. Um, and so there was, you know, you can understand why God was like, destroy those places. But I want to go back to the particular mountain, Mount Hermon, and also where I believe, and, and, and I think many scholars agree with me, where Jesus would have been on the mountain of transfiguration. Because of the Canaanites and the Phoenicians in the area, Mount Hermon is very much towards the north of Israel, very close to modern day Lebanon. Uh, they go skiing there, it's a ski resort today, they can get snow there, that's how tall it is. Uh, obviously during the winter um, but uh, that said um, Phoenicians and the uh, Canaanites um, it was a high place for them as well uh, and they uh, the area around Mount Hermon because of them and the worship that they did there became known as the abode of demons Hebrew literature that Jesus would have been taught and the people of the day in fact like the book of Enoch and some of these other books uh, the book of Jasher the uh, book of Jubilees um, these are um, extra biblical books. Um, they may contain some truths in them. Some of it is probably mythology, but they taught that the group of demons called the Watchers lived on this mountain. That they, when they were cast out of heaven, that they went in the first place that they came to was Mount Hermon and made Mount Hermon their abode. Um, now, of course, uh, this you know necessarily true. It's not listed in the Bible, per se. Um, Enoch is a real person, but we don't know that he he wrote this book at all or not. Um, but that said, um, uh, there was the belief. Okay, this mountain was where you would find Baal. And that's why they worshipped on these mountains, because this is where Molech would, is where they uh, uh, heat the, the, the statue of Molech up to a burning hot flame if you, and you touch it you would glowing red and they would throw their babies on it uh, pretty vile things um, and uh, here Jesus goes to the top of this mountain which everybody <laughs> believed if you will in our modern day thing was haunted okay it was a haunt for the most evil beings in the universe uh, and that's where he goes and has his transfiguration where Elijah and Moses come down to meet him uh, 
a lot of people believe that Sinai also at one point was revered by the Midianites as a place where the demons abode, and that's where God came and met Moses. Carmel, Mount Carmel, where Elijah met the prophets of Baal, was a high worship place for them, for them to worship Baal as well. And that's where Elijah took them on. If you notice the the um, recurring pattern here is that God goes right to the source. He goes right to the enemy. He takes the fight to them. He doesn't shy away. He doesn't want to meet them on common ground. He takes it to their place. Um, and uh, uh, whether or not, you know, it's, it's real belief, if there's a really demon there, uh, I think when people start worshiping a demon somewhere, the demons eventually kind of come to that place, right? Um, not that there's anything wrong with the place to begin with. It's just what people make out of it. Um, so there's definitely evil things going on here at Mount Hermon. Um, the burning of children alive, the raping of young virgins. Um, there was an evil spirit about this place. It's always been, in fact, that in the past, satanic worship would either take place on a mountain or a madman mountain. The ziggurats that were found throughout the world, often human sacrifice. Think of the Aztecs and even the Mayans. They would sacrifice young virgins and such like that on top of them. So Jesus goes right to this place where all the demonic activity takes place, like Elijah and Moses did before him. And he has this glorious, holy powerful moment and not only does Elijah and Moses come and visit him but the father himself is there he says this is my son this is Jesus the mighty warrior he's taken on Satan right in his backyard so the mountain Jesus is talking about when he says you will say this mountain be cast into the sea is a spiritual warfare as we put our faith in Christ, we can say to the evil spirits of the universe, go throw yourself into the sea. It's not even so much about, you know, people and the problems and the, the things we have in this world as it is, okay, when the devil comes after you, you, God has given you authority. If you have faith in Jesus, he's given you authority to stand against the enemy. Um, James 4, 7, submit therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. 1 John 2.13, I am writing to you, fathers, because you know him who has been from the beginning. And I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. Romans 16.20, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. And the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. It's interesting to read from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4, that he prophesies, every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill will be made low. And that's repeated in the New Testament when we're talking of John the Baptist. It says, A voice of one calling in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, and every mountain and hill be made low. The crooked way shall be made straight, and the rough ways smooth. And all humanity will see God's salvation. Now, when the Lord comes back and Jesus comes back, are, is it truly going to be all flat again in other words is there not going to be any more mountains well there's part of me that says i kind of like the mountains uh we always liked especially the appalachian mountains and they're beautiful and they're pretty um, i know they're hard to grow stuff on for sure but um they are pretty and beautiful i don't know if that was reality going to happen that god's going to take all the mountains and make them flat like isaiah and uh, i think probably um, it's more spiritual again that these mountains represent evil spirits, the, the, the things that Satan and his demons are doing in the world. And they're going to be cast into the sea, which is the sea is, um, for those purposes, hell, right? The lake of fire. And uh, he is, uh, we're not going to have to deal with him anymore once Jesus returns. So the mountains are a representation, yes, of the difficulties of life, but they're more than just representation of our difficulties they are representative of the demonic spirits that love to torment humanity and jesus gave his disciples it's important to remember when he sent his disciples out he said i give you authority over the evil spirits we don't have it on our own but if we are christians we can have authority over them we don't have to be afraid of them I resist the devil and he will flee from you james reminds us so when you 
hear that, you read that again, when Jesus says, you say to this mountain, be moved, it will be cast into the sea, and it will have to be. That Jesus is talking about the holy, high holy, the unholy, um, evil, demonic spirits that come against you. Um, that you can say to them, be cast in the sea, and they will be cast. So, uh, that's uh, just a taste of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, trying to explain, and maybe some things that are hard to understand what Jesus says. Or sometimes they may even turn us off a little bit. You know, they may think, wow, Jesus, that was harsh. We want to talk about those and what Jesus meant. Um, so let's pray. And hopefully I can keep this video going um, for the uh, next little bit while I close in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for tonight. And uh, uh, Lord, uh, in spite of internet trouble, Lord, we believe that your spirit spoke and talked. I pray that your word would go forth and encourage us as your followers, that we, um, that the enemy has no authority over us. And we thank you for that, Lord. And I pray for those that are struggling. Uh, maybe they don't know you, Lord, and they are um, facing some spiritual torment in their lives. I pray that they would turn to you and give their lives to you, Lord, where the victory can be seen in you in your name amen god bless and once again sorry about the interruption hope you were able to uh watch both of them